Hello friends, uses the excuse that at least he's not addicted to drugs to justify his Dota addiction here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy, in which we're going to be talking about how to counter the absolute most disgusting, egregious combo in Dota right now, and that is the Morphling Earthshaker combo. It is my opinion that most people that pick this combo in pubs, they're not very good at Dota and they just want some free MMR and you can counter it and you can make their games a living hell which is doing the community a service as well as gaining you some free MMR. So let's talk about how you can do that. So the first thing you need to consider when you're playing against a combo that is this powerful, quite possibly the best combo in Dota right now, you need to pick things that are good against it. You can't just play well against it because they pick the best combo in Dota. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. You cannot just play well. You have to pick something bullshit and strong yourself. One of the biggest baits in Dota is that people say, I see this on Reddit, I see this in YouTube comments, pick OD. That's the best morph counter in the game, so surely it counters Morphling plus Earthshaker. Not true. Morphling plus Earthshaker is not the same thing as Morphling. Morphling is a shit hero. Morphling plus Earthshaker is the best combo in Dota. So you can understand why this counter doesn't work. Basically, OD is a slow paced hero. Morphling Earthshaker are also slow paced, but when they come online, they win Dota against almost anything. So if you're playing a slow paced hero, you're giving them exactly what they want. You're letting them farm to that Aghanim Scepter. And when they get that Aghanim Scepter on Morphling, OD gets chain locked down and he dies. And Morphling gets so farmed in the time that OD is also farming that he gets a BKB by the time that they want to fight. So OD does not counter this combo. That is a bait. Do not take that bait. The real way to play against this combo is there are two pieces. You need to one, pick heroes that can kill Morphling in the laning stage. Look at this stat morph. It goes from one shift rate to four to 10. This is some of the most ridiculous scaling in all of Dota. You have to punish the fact that this ability is complete trash at level one, and everybody goes for this at level one. Even It's even trash at level three, so you have to punish this. I see people picking stuff like this against Morphling, stuff that doesn't kill Morphling. You can't just play an Abaddon to sit and harass the Morph. You can't just play a Keeper of the Light and, oh, he's going to miss a few last hits. You need to kill this guy three or four times in the lane by the time he's level three. And you know what? You can do that because Morphling is such a bad hero that he doesn't even get picked if Earthshaker isn't in the game. He's a bad hero. And the reason for that is because level one through three is very punishable, but people don't punish it. And the first step in punishing it is you need to pick to punish it. The second thing you need to do in order to counter this combo is you need to take that good early game that comes from playing against a Morph who's very bad in the laning stage and Earthshaker who's honestly quite bad in the laning stage as well and translate that into a one game early on. If you allow the game to go to late, even if the enemy team doesn't have a gold advantage, as long as they get to that Aghanim Scepter and they get to the combo, they will probably win the game. So you need heroes that can take towers and therefore take a map advantage, and at the very least have a few items on the Morphling and Earthshaker before you start fighting them. So that's why these heroes are very good. So you need to pick some heroes that kill the Morphling. I like to pick Sand King. Supports, Lion is great, Rubik is great because he has Burst, he has the Lift. Lina is great because she has a uh, Stun, Legion because you have the Duel, you have the Q that can do damage, uh, you have the Skywrath who has Silence, and then these heroes are just pushing heroes. So you want your position five or your mid uh, to have some sort of pushing that you can take your advantage and push it into a bunch of towers. So here we have a game where I was playing versus Earthshaker Morphling. I have a Sand King and a Rubik in a lane versus the Morphling plus a Mirana, which is honestly not a bad lane just because they have dual ranged versus us. But what we picked was two heroes that have kill threat on Morphling, two heroes that have stuns, and two heroes that have burst. If you're not picking this, you're not punishing the Morphling's early game. He has to die. You have to, at the very least, push him off the creep wave uh, by, by applying that kill threat, even if you're not killing him. In fact, I, I kind of deduced after this game that if you want to play this Morphling Earthshaker combo, you need to know what he's laning against, uh, or you need to try lane him to give him a good early game. So I, don't, I don't see how anybody stops this from happening. Basically, all you do is 
unlike other lanes where you might save your resources, the moment the game starts, you don't care about equilibrium, you don't care about last hitting, you just cast all of your spells and as many right clicks as po possible on the Morph lane. Because you can see here that he tried to Strength Morph after I stunned him, and it doesn't do anything. And I just stun, chain stun, now he's only got two tangos left, and you can see that pull the wave over, go for the stun again, and he dies. And I'll slow that down just to show you. It's it's not it's not anything miraculous that we did. It's just that we stun him and he tries to strength morph. Dude, look at him morph. It's pathetic. It doesn't it doesn't do anything. This hero is playing with 502 HP and three armor and 51 damage. This is one of the worst level one heroes in the game. And I think one big problem is people don't punish it. So you can see here that we knew that Morphling had just TP'd back in. So I suicide to try to kill him. And the reason for that is because now he's going to have to walk all the way back to lane. And you can see that in this lane, I didn't do the typical Sand King build where people ignore Caustic Finale. And people ignore the Burrow Strike. They go like one point in Burrow and they max out the Sandstorm. I went two points in Burrow because I want that extra burst potential and the, uh, the, the gap close against the Morphling. And then I went Caustic because I want the kill threat on Morphling. So the second step as I mentioned in the uh, introduction part of this video, to beating the Morphling Earthshaker is to try to end the game or at the very least gain a massive amount of map control in the early game uh, by pushing towers. And uh, this was a pretty easy game to push because we had a Chen and, and the Chen is top. So this call was made by my support player Husky. He said, all right, Chen, let's go top. These guys are losing the lane. There's no way that they defend this. Let's take this tower. And we get this tower uh, basically for free. I mean, it costs us a little bit of mana, but with the Chen, this makes it very easy. Push out the lane. Um, ideally, we would honestly probably smoke towards mid there, and I think that would be a pretty solid play. We go for a kill attempt on the Morphling, but as you can see, with the Attribute Morph, it's almost impossible to kill him unless we get the jump on him. There's some weird stuff that happens. Really, what we were trying to do here was move towards the mid lane and push that tower, but some stuff happened where people kind of got in our way, so it took us a while to get there. But the intent of this of this rotation was not to just move into their jungle to fight for fun. We were trying to make our way towards the mid lane, which we push. And because of our positioning around the tower, and because we just have this advantage that we got from the early game, there is no way that they can uh, deal with us pushing this. So after this, the play that we make is we move into the enemy triangle. The reason that we're not playing top is because we have a huge lead and playing in the enemy triangle gives you the most farm on the map. It denies the enemy team the most farm on the map because this area is already scary. We already got this tower. We already got this tower. So they're going to be scared to play here regardless of if we're there or not. Maybe one person can go over there and push people out. But if we're farming in their triangle, this is supposed to be the safe place for them. We cut the mid wave. We cut the bot wave. And they can't farm anything. So we do want to go towards this bot tower eventually. But if we just hold the triangle after taking this good early game and taking this tower and then this tower, well, we're probably going to win versus the Morph Earthshaker even if we don't push high ground just because the good early game and the towers have allowed us to access this very advantageous area of the map. Uh, but because we do have this big lead, we we, we actually end up winning the game um, without having to hold their triangle. But if you're in a game where it feels a little bit harder, you can just hold the triangle. So like I said, I go top just to kind of shove this guy out of here. Uh, Chen recalls me back to the bot lane. We take a fight. We notice that Earthshaker is still only level 4. We push the tier 2 tower. I zone the centaur to the left there. I had no intent in going in on him, but the centaur walks in. I said to my team, hey guys, it's so early in the game that they can't walk into my sandstorm. I think if we stay in the sandstorm, we can push this tower. Of course, the Chen allows this to be to be possible. Earthshaker's still level 5. Without level 6, there's no way that they can fight us. And we take their racks. So basically, what I would say is that due to us making half decent choices in this game in relation to playing against the morph and earthshaker we were able to abuse the combo and take a really good early game and then translate it into this early push and i know that's not always easy to do in pubs but i guarantee you that if you at least do a few of these things and punish a few of these things and then try to move into the enemy triangle and at least take map control the game will feel significantly easier than if you just try to play a normal game of Dota against these heroes. And if you feel like your team is not going to pick Chen or something along those lines, then maybe you need to be the one that's doing that. Maybe uh, you can pick one hero to kill the Morphling in the laning stage, and then pick like a Shadow Shaman, for example, 
as a position four, and then that way you can be the pushing hero. Or maybe you pick a Lashrak as the position three, and you can be the pushing hero, and then you have some setup stun for your position four, like a Rubik, who can lift into your Lashrak stun. You know, there's ways of drafting where you can be the hero that does everything, as well as, like, killing the Morphling. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video.